You've got to love a good Clinton scandal. It's Aaron Dykes here for TrueStreamMedia.com, and not only is it the very corrupt Clinton political family, but its foundations, an important international construct that we need to talk about because it has its own set of rules, it's tax-free in many, if not most, cases, and it allows for back-channel political negotiations, covert foreign policy, and corrupt you know, conflict of interest, trading of guns and drugs, creating a pathway, making really sleazy deals with dictators on down. And it's just part of the modern day negotiations, nothing necessarily strictly to do with the Clintons. They've had their share of controversies, no doubt, but I don't intend to go back through their whole record right now, perhaps at another time. Uh, but, you know, they've had any number of controversies already. Now it is the Clinton Foundation itself, though. Here's from the Times. They say the review echoed criticism of Mr. Clinton's early years in the White House. For all its successes, Clinton Foundation had become a sprawling concern. Supervised by a rotating board of old Clinton hands, vulnerable to distraction and threatened by conflicts of interest. It ran a multi-million dollar deficit for several years despite vast amounts of money flowing in. And over here in Breitbart, they say it's $492 million over a 10-year period there, nearly half a billion dollars changing hands in a short span of time, and it's overtly going for global development, helping people in poor countries, blah, 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 the same kind of thing we've seen from Bill Gates, from the Rockefeller Foundation, the Ford Foundation, this whole gang of big foundations. And it's rife, as Breitbart accurately parts out, with crony capitalism. And they highlight just a few of the conflicts of interest, like using the Clinton Foundation as a pathway for launching into 2016. Uh, presumably you might find donors who are friendly both with the foundation and with the campaign later on, and their donations perhaps somewhat channeled through the foundation. At least that would be the concern. Let the facts fall where they may here. This is not a full investigation. I don't have all the facts, so I'm not making formal accusations. I'm just saying these are the typical corruptions you look for in these systems. Also up for play is $46 million plus from countries like Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Qatar, Brunei, Oman. Really close allies, really controversial allies in the setting up of the New World Order and the conducting of Middle East policy. And there they are with million-dollar contracts, all while Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is negotiating with their countries officially and through foundation donations and, you know, pal sweetheart deals through back-channel negotiations. Just definitely interesting stuff. You've also got connections to MF Global, the crony capitalist firm that spent customer funds on the derivatives market and lost out on their bet. They're connected to the Glenn... Clinton initiative through Teneo Holdings, and they've got several clients, it says here, who are sponsors through Teneo of the Clinton Global Initiative. Isn't that just fascinating? Well, really, it's par for the course, and again, we want to look at the global development infrastructure and why we need to pay more close attention to philanthropy and look for the hidden business ties. Here's a quote. Let's go back in time to Smedley D. Butler. He was very high up, and you can read about his exploits and his official positions in wars, a racket, as well as the official biographies on him. But he says in this very fascinating quote, I spent 33 years and four months in active military service, and during that period I spent most of my time as a high-class high muscle man for big business, Wall Street, and the bankers. In short, I was a racketeer, a gangster for capitalism. I helped make Mexico and especially Tampico safer for American oil interests in 1914. I helped make Haiti and Cuba a decent place for National City Bank boys to collect revenues. I helped in the raping of a half dozen Central American republics for the benefit of Wall Street. I helped purify Nicaragua for the International Banking House of Brown Brothers, as in Brown Brothers Harriman, 1902-1912. I brought light to the Dominican Republic for the American sugar interest in 1916. I helped make Honduras right for the American fruit companies in 1903. In China, 1927, I helped see to it that the Standard Oil Rockefeller boys went on its way unmolested. 
Looking back on it, I might have given Al Capone a few hits. The best he could do was to operate his racket in three districts. I operated on three continents. And as a major muscle man for big business and Wall Street and the bankers, you see an even more sophisticated game today. It's played diplomatically, as I've mentioned, through the IMF and the World Bank. They put conditionalities on countries that take out loans, and then, lo and behold, there's some very convenient deals for a number of ranking businesses. That's how the fascism works in a sophisticated manner. And they do rape and pillage third world countries, and they set up the infrastructure that not only benefits crony companies, but sets up the global system that's being built around us as they integrate into that larger system. It's just ripe with corruption from A to Z, and the Clinton Initiative is really just one more brick in the wall for that whole system. Uh, here's just a few random snapshot examples. What happened to our tsunami aid, 2005, in Canada Free Press, and they talk about all the money and bank accounts that were raised to this big national effort telling people they should help with unprecedented disaster relief. Well, they sent the money by the hundreds of millions for this tsunami, $400 million. And they say, what happened to the money? Well, you go through a lot of detail and you get down to the bottom line. Average Canadians donated their money to get tsunami victims immediate help, not years later. The Sri Lankans have been told by their own media Canadians donated hundreds of millions to help them. Four months later, but democracies in a whole are playing God, not just with taxpayer dollars, but donated money that came with no strings attached. No strings attached. That came with no strings attached. If it can, it can be used to give to any crony firm that they want. They don't have to use it to actually help people. These uh, tax-free foundations usually use a lot of propaganda to get people in on a sentimental point. You're going to help people. You're going to give immediate relief. But unfortunately, a lot of times the money disappears. Where's the $25 million? For, I'm sorry, $425 million? The NGOs and this organization have an automatic response. We're here for the long term. In other words, don't ask because it's none of your business. And furthermore, in other words, they're building up long-term infrastructure to control these areas. And they're using philanthropy as a camel's nose under the tent. It goes on and on, but there's a very interesting column written in the New York Times not too long ago, only weeks, by the son of Warren Buffett, Peter Buffett, about the charitable industrial complex. And they've got this cute little illustration here about the guilt washing station. He talks about what he's witnessed as the son of Warren Buffett. And I don't know if there's another agenda going on here, but he calls out some real criticisms. Early in our philanthropic journey, my wife and I became aware of something I started to call philanthropic colonialism. I noticed a donor, a donor had the urge to save the day in some fashion. People, including me, who had very little knowledge of a particular place would think they could solve a local problem. Farming methods, education, business development, blah, blah, blah. But they get into it. What really happens is the money gets directed according to this philanthropic agenda of which uh, Bill and Melinda Gates' agenda is pretty clear if you read up on it. Same with the Rockefeller and Ford Foundations and others. And I, I don't know if the Clinton Global Initiative in particular lines up exactly with those aims, but I would expect a lot of overlap in terms of larger agenda. Right here, the son of Warren Buffett talks about the approximately 316 billion given away in 2012 in the United States alone. That is through philanthropies. They're growing currently at a rate bigger than businesses and government sectors alike. The philanthropy business is a big business. So you better look for the corruption behind a lot of the guilt and a lot of the claims of do-gooding. And he talks here about what I would call conscience laundering. Great term. Feeling better about accumulating more than any one person could possibly need to live on by sprinkling around as an act of charity. And they say as more lives and communities are destroyed by the system that creates vast amounts of wealth for the few, the more heroic it sounds to give back. In other words, they scoop up all the pieces and they steer the development of something that they give back just a little bit to do good and help the people, but it ultimately leads 
in my view, to more control and a more centralized system we're not interested in. At the same time, setting up these global structures creates an undermarket, an underbelly market for firms who want these contracts and who want to profit off of the things going on here and the vast amounts of emotional money that's falling in. From a few years back, you've also got, where did all the money go? How about $700 million in Katrina relief, money that went missing, and the case is there. But again, people sent in money to try to help. Not only was it squandered and misdirected through, perhaps you could say, Homeland Security and FEMA bad policy, but somebody's actually taking that money in some cases. Uh, you also had the expose on Bono of U2 and how his one foundation is under fire for giving just a little bit, over 1% of all the money it collects to charity. And they go on to explain how very, very little of the money raised with these big celebrity pushes and how they're going to help and solve everything, where they meet with world leaders, how very little of this money goes to the hands of the poor or any direct relief efforts. In the case of Bono, most of it went to promotional, getting out the message type stuff, which is probably legitimate up to a point, but he definitely participated in a larger giving the impression that they're there to actually help people and not just to collect money talking about the issue solely. And down here in the details you see in the case of Bono, one said it took no money from the public and that most of its funding came from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. But of course all the other people who donated as well, it's part of the same agenda. While you're raising money, you're really working towards a larger agenda. In the case of Bill and Melinda Gates, putting in private, again this is the cronyism, putting in mandates for private GMO seeds and the like, contracts for everything, the development of agriculture for a new green revolution, these are big things going on. How bad can it get on the extreme front you had through IMF policy and through IMF loans? You had riots over water in parts of Bolivia as companies including Bechtel and other private companies and their subsidiaries tried to privatize not only the actual water system, but they tried to actually ban the collection of rainwater for real amongst a population that's very poor and many of them depend on those kind of systems but regardless the extent of the greed that a water company a private company would lead to corrupt legislation to ban the collection of rainwater and privatize the systems all for profit but in the name in this case under the IMF of international development and helping people this broad tent very dangerous these broad tents don't forget the words of Smedley Butler. Do check out Wars of Racket. It's a real short, like 40 page book, and you can look up some of the just shorter essays that give you a summary of it. There is a neo colonialism going on, what the son of Warren Buffett called a philanthropic colonialism that we need to become aware of, talk about, and look out for. Signing off for TrueStreamMedia.com.